Hi there, my name is Lori Ditto, and I would like to talk to you about a vision that I had. And my hope is that as you listen to this vision, that you will never see this place. It was August 28, 2008. In a vision, Jesus took me to hell. I didn't go to hell as a bystander. I went to hell because I would not forgive. You wonder, how did that happen? I've thought about it so many times. How could this have happened? That morning I was getting ready. We had a guest speaker coming. The sound man was sick that day, so I was running sound. I was at the back of the room while we were worshiping. It was a, it was a wonderful song, talking about the souls, how Jesus loves them. I had my eyes closed, and all of a sudden I felt heat come into the room, intense heat. I actually thought an explosion must have happened. I opened my eyes in time to see the front of the room change. Gates were opening, and a hand came out of those gates and grabbed a hold of me and pulled me past all the people in the room very quickly. I passed these gates that were at least six feet thick. And then these gates slammed shut. And I was placed in a teardrop-shaped cell. I heard right away, you are in hell eternally for unforgiveness. I was a believer, you guys. I would have never thought somebody like me could go to hell. I mean, I went to church many times a week. I prayed, I fasted, I'm an evangelist. I went out sharing my testimony weekly. I disciple people, I give my tithe, I pray, I pray, I pray. And yet, I went to hell because I would not forgive. What's it like in hell? It's horrific. The first thing that happened was the heat was so much that my skin began dripping off of my body. It was excruciatingly painful. I looked around at the people who were trapped in other cells. They didn't have any skin. It had already melted off of them and they were screaming. And it hurt my ears to hear them scream and then I realized I was the one screaming. My eyes were moving back and forth as quickly as they could and suddenly they broke apart because there is no unity in hell. There were significant pains. I mean, everything was painful, but there was extreme things that caused intense pain. And one of those things was all the water in my body evaporated. And you know, we are a lot of water, but I was no more. It was excruciatingly painful to make that change. I looked down at my left arm And the bone in that arm had this yellow stuff in it. I now know that's bone marrow and it went black. And it, I felt this pain all over my whole body. It hurt like you would not believe. It was excruciatingly painful. Everything hurt. I breathed in fire. I stopped breathing. I only took small breaths in between screaming. Everything, everything hurt. There is no flu that hurts worse than this. There is no car accident that hurts worse than this. And, and I knew this is going to go on forever and ever because hell is eternal. And the people who are there 
are eternally in pain. Before I knew it, all these sins had entered into my cell. You know, when Jesus saved me, he separated me from sin. Where did he put it? It was in hell waiting for me. I should have never been there, but when I got there, it came back. I, I opened up like the first ones, and the first ones were all about um, sins that had been done against me. They're basically the reason why I was there, sins I would not forgive. And it's true, it seemed like there were a lot of them, but as soon as I processed those, then sins that I had done came into the room. There was no comparison. I have sinned so much, and Jesus had set me free from that. If I had only forgiven, I would not have been there. The section of hell that I was in was with my family, my tribe, and there were a lot of people there. And there were a lot of people there like me. They were Christians. They didn't think that they would have ever went to hell either, but they didn't obey. They had done other things. They had done things like not control their anger, been a drunk, had sexual immorality. They were there for different reasons, but they were there. It was unthinkable that I should be in hell burning. I began losing this shape. You see, we're made in the image of God. We're image bearers. But this shape was quickly leaving. And I could see in looking at the other cells of people I could never get to, that I was gonna look like them. It was a grotesque, scary looking sickness. I thought it must be something like cancer. And there it was, in hell eternally. The worst pain that was there when I was in hell was I knew what God the Father was doing. And he took his robe right at his neckline. And he tore it. I'd never seen that done before. It was done the first time. And that time, what it meant was, I'm done with you. I can't tell you what it feels like to know God is done with you. It was as if my life was over and there was no hope for me. There was no way out. I was going to be in hell eternally, burning, twisting, hurting, and it just kept increasing. There was never going to be an end to this torture, all because I wouldn't obey Jesus. When he ripped that garment, I've never felt anything so bad. Then just as quickly as it happened, I was back. And my life, my life has never been the same. It took a while to get to a point where I was free from the unforgiveness in my life. And in that time, I only cared about me and making sure that my salvation was right, working out my own salvation with fear and trembling. And once I was sure I don't have that in me anymore, I reached out to my family to help them, my friends. And now I wanna help you. Hell is real. People go to hell all the time because they will not trust and love, obey Jesus. It's the most important thing we do every day. 
And so I want to say to you, if you're not a believer yet, you must come to know Jesus or that place of eternal separation is where you'll go. If you are a believer, I want to say to you, take your salvation serious. There's lists. We must stay out of sin. You must repent. What is repentance? It's four things. One, you have to agree with God that sin is sin. Two, you must feel godly sorrow over your sin. Three, confess your sin one to another so that you can be fervently healed. And four, put something in place, you won't do that again, so that you can turn from that sin. It's a warning, friend to friend. You have time now. Take it very serious because the people who are in hell, they can't get out. God help us stay on a narrow path. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.